What up everyone who's watching Profiles in Drive today? I have someone I've known since for a very long time since high school. Uh, he, I knew him as a coach. It's hard to see him as I, I, I still have a hard time seeing him as an equal in terms of the dance industry because um, he's one of the people that helped influence and grow my style in, uh, in Glenda High School. And I brought him here today because I wanted him to share you the message and the stories he's learned through, through not as only uh, coaching others into a million cha championships he's earned, but also the, the stories he's learned in terms of uh, becoming a dancer in his own individual right. So anyways, here's Eric. Let, uh, let the people know who you are a little bit, how you got into dancing, uh, what you did with it. Um, I kind of got into dancing because I just kind of wanted to get involved in school. I remember the coach at the at Glendale High School, Kelly Palmer, she uh, was trying to start an all-male hip-hop team because she had a dance team. And she just wanted, like, nice boys on the team that weren't going to be, like, pricks and were just going to be <laughs> hard workers. And I was in her English class, and she picked, like, six of us, and she kind of just asked me one day, was like, hey, do you want to be part of the dance team? And I'm all, okay. Like, I'm not involved in anything else. Might as well try it, you know? I remember I was terrible. I was terrible, but you know, like I, I'm someone who wants to be good at everything that I try. So you kind of just keep working at it, working at it, and I'm like proud to kind of be like a self-taught dancer because I remember when I started, I was not good by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, so, starting from your high school, like how did you? What did you do in terms of training yourself? Um, I think in Glendale for us, like, like you know, like we're we were a high we were part of like a highly competitive circuit, yeah, we and so <laughs> you kind of have to be aware of your surroundings and kind of see what everybody else is doing. And I think the best way to be better is to look at people who are doing what you want to do and kind of take after them a little and see what they're doing and kind of watch and um, like not not copy but kind of mimic what they're doing and then sort of make it your own you uh, know and so I remember when we when I first started dancing it was like I don't know was, I don't even know what it is like basic like performing and like light hip-hop you uh -huh. know and then I remember just watching a bunch of teams that did like contemporary and jazz and for some for some reason I gravitated towards that and so not growing up in a place where there's a bunch of studios around you kind of have to just watch videos and this was back before like YouTube was <laughs> yeah. so it was just when, when at the end of the year when all the uh, like the nationals videos and like the big competition videos would come out I remember I would order them and watch them oh, wow. and kind of just just practice in front of a mirror and just kind of look and be like okay my foot's supposed to go here that person's foot's right there and they're turning a lot so I need to put my foot there too oh, you wow. know and I think what I think a lot of my training actually came from coaching and teaching uh -huh. because the way that I coach and the way that I teach I'm very uh, like physical I'm very hands-on I like to dance with my kids I'm not the kind of person that just like sits there and go like put your foot there and do this and do this and this I like to get up and do it I like to um, if I'm gonna challenge my kids and do things that they don't know how to do and I don't know how to do, I would I, I like to figure it out first on myself so I can teach them, you know, and then watch them do it even better. I'm all, okay, that's awesome. <laughs> but I really think a lot of my training came from coaching and teaching kids how to turn. And because at, at, at Glendale, like, we get, we get kids that just want to be part of something. Yeah, you know, it's not necessarily like, they want to be in the dance industry. They just want to have friends, and so they come, and we take everybody. We don't <laughs> as long true. as as long as you're nice, we'll take you on the team. Team yeah, yeah, we'll 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 just take you as long as you're nice, and we'll we can teach you how to do something. You know, we'll find a place for you. But I think teaching people that have never danced before is really beneficial. There's something about teaching uh, people who are already amazing. But teaching people who don't know their right from their left, like, it helps you learn a lot yeah. because you kind of go back to basics, you know, and you, it's like your foundation, you're constantly reiterating it over and over and over again until it becomes more than second nature, yeah. you know? So it sounds like 
from you went from self teaching yourself. So every time uh, from your dance yourself, you experience what it was like to not have anything. And then every time you're teaching the students, you're going through that process again, over and over and over again. You see it. Like I see kids come in all the time. That I'm like that was me. I remember coming in frustrated, not knowing how to do anything, you know. And my coaches were patient with me, so in turn I had to be patient with them, you know, because yeah. you never know. And I'm th there's been many, many, many students that have come through like those dance room doors that when they first get in there, I'm like I don't know how <laughs> I'm going to do anything. And then by the time they've been like in the program like two, three years, it's massive the amount of growth you know you just if you want it bad enough you can do it yeah like, easily yeah that's the thing that always blew me away that we, we somehow took newbies and they and like with given a year or two they're competing with dancers that have been doing it since they were little kids yeah and that I that always like blew my mind what I guess I, I want to I'm gonna jump to the coaching part real quick how did you like, what, what was the process from taking them from lit, from newbie to someone amazing in a short amount of time? Because that's a lot of people. A lot of people want the quick thing, but they don't know the. And you can. Uh, I think. I think that's. I think that's the thing. I think being part of a, a high school program, um, you kind of. It's in a way like, it's better because you have like a start and a finish. Yeah. Let's say you come in as a freshman. You know that you only have four years. So, um, if these are the only four years that you're gonna dance, you have to make the most of it, yeah. you know? And, uh, like I said, a lot of kids just kind of join because they want to be part of something. Dancing isn't, dancing is a hobby, you know? I think it turned into a passion for a lot of kids, yeah. um, but most of them it's just a hobby, so they just wanna kind of get the best they can get out of four years, and you kind of, you know the kids, like, you know the kids that are gonna be there and the kids that you um, correct something and you correct and you correct and you correct and they uh, you can see it you can see the gears kind of moving and let's say they don't correct it every time but you can see them trying to correct it those are the kids that are gonna get better because they learn eventually how to I think being, being a dancer is something you have to get used to criticism all the time yeah um, and I think it's hard it's hard to be criticized but because it's uh, there's a lot of ego involved yeah. but I think once you put it aside and you know that if, if it's a good teacher and it's a supportive teacher that they're telling you this because they want to see you grow that you kind of that self-loathing that like oh my god I'm awful because I can't point my toe kind of <laughs> gets out of there and you kind of just like I'm not pointing my foot so I should probably learn how to point my foot let me stand in front of the mirror and turn, turn, turn until my foot is pointed, you yeah. know? Um, yeah, so it sounds like it's uh, what made them good because, I mean, the only way someone's going to get good that fast is not only the hours they put in, but the amount of feedback they get. Oh, totally. Like, um, I wouldn't necessarily say that I was, like, nice all the time. <laughs> no, but you were you firm. I, I, was, I, I was firm, and I think, I think, uh, I think high school is a time where you're kind of getting prepared for like real life, like real world, you know? And I, 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 I used to think that I was firm because I knew that my kids were capable of more than they thought that they could. Yeah. I knew that if I am hard on you, um, I knew the kids that I could be really hard on and I knew the kids that I had to kind of handle with, with kid gloves. And the kids that I was really hard on, later on, every single one of them were like, I appreciate it because now I understand. I understand now that it wasn't about being like mean. It was about you. I was giving you seventy percent when you knew that I, that I was capable of a lot more. No, but that's that's like the best possible feedback that I could get is kids knowing that I believe in them so much that I wanted to push them to where they they didn't think they could. Yeah. And every time, like. That push, that push, that push. They like they would hate me and they would grit their teeth, but they always got there. And yeah. at the end, they were always like, "Yeah, I probably couldn't have done it if you didn't push me as hard as you did." Yeah. You know? So, because I am still blown away, like how fast people got. How good. good. Yeah. Like, me how, too. Yeah. And I witnessed it all the time, and I'm all I. 
even t like today, today I went to go see, I, I, was, I was teaching a couple of, solo, couple of solos, and I, I haven't seen the kids um, a lot. I've been gone for like almost two years now. And just, because the kids, my last year coaching, those freshmen are now gonna be seniors, and the growth is phenomenal. I, I, I'm blown away, and I think when you're involved in it, when you see like the growth like this, it's kind of not as, whoa, as yeah. when like you saw them here and now they're there, you're like, <laughs> whoa, <are> you? <laughs> that is, that's insane, and I'm so happy and glad for you, yeah. you know? Like, good, you worked hard, and if you work hard, you'll, you'll get what you want, you know? Yeah. Still bouncing off that because I because I really, I really want to wrap around like how were you guys because I was only there for two years yeah uh, and I I mean I got I did I started learning stuff I never thought I would do I mean I never thought I'd do a toe touch or do a back tuck or any of that other stuff or even dance with a girl that was probably the hugest stretch for me yeah like when I when I started doing co-ed that I was when I when I first started doing that I was so stuck in the thought I like doing things solo. The idea of having to work with a partner was like, oh. Yeah. And see, this it's so strange because to me, like, that was always the most appealing thing. I think that's why I enjoyed coaching so much. I really like a team atmosphere. I love being a part of something. And um, for for me, at least, like, when, when I was on the team and I was on co-ed, like, there was nothing like that partnership like you, you you couldn't you 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 couldn't um I think there's a lot of I think to want to get uh, someone in high school to be so accountable for somebody else oh, it's asking yeah, a lot for huge. somebody yeah. it's asking a lot and um especially I think for 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 the for the guys like you you were like throwing the girl in the air you know <laughs> yeah. like if the if, if if the girl fell or anything like yeah you we can be like she didn't hold herself but ultimately like you would feel bad because yeah those... i mean you had to catch her you know um yeah that could... so i think it teaches you a lot it teaches mm -hmm. a lot of like i said accountability and knowing how to be there for somebody else even when you i don't know don't like don't like a person but like you're not gonna like all your coworkers, but at the same time, you're part of the same team, so you have to kind of do the same job. Yeah. You know, you both have to get the job done. So. Yeah, I, mean, I think that was something I didn't I sort of grew into is like because uh, first time doing co-ed, I'm like I got a board. So I get the whole thing. This is cool because we're, I'm doing stuff that I never thought I would do. Yeah, totally. Um, especially when you guys had these. These standards like I gotta you guys gotta learn this trick this trick this trick in order to be here you got guys gotta know how to do doubles uh, you guys gotta know how to do card wheels pain wheels I'm like what <laughs> <laughs> and that's what scared me like, that I think that's what was good too is because there was this expectation you guys gotta learn how to do this or else like or you're not gonna be in it yeah because there's and like, like I think I think that initial fear um, hinders a lot of people but the, I, I found that the people that succeeded were the people that were kind of fearful, but still were like, I'm scared, but I, 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 I can do this. And, I'm, I, and I won't want to do this. I don't, I, like 100% of the time, sometimes I'll be like, you know, this is too much. I can't, I can't handle it. But um, I think fear is a huge hindrance, but I think in in small doses, it, it kind of it lights a fire under your butt to yeah. kind of do things that you wouldn't normally want to do that you want to normally run away from. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. Once you get past it, you kind of so you learn what you're made of. Yeah. Uh, so I want to dig a little deeper. So what was the standard that you had for the team and for the individual? Um, I think for, for, for an individual, I wanted, at first I, I wanted everybody, um, that was there, I wanted them to want to be there, you mm -hmm. know, I feel like the, the program there, and I'm sure like every other dance program everywhere, I think like a studio, um, any competitive team, you know, um, even just taking like classes, 
uh, like on your free time, I think like you have to want to be there because then if, if you don't want to be there, then you shouldn't, you know, and you're, you're kind of taking, you're taking, um, like on a team, you're kind of taking the spot of somebody else who will work hard and maybe not be as good as you now, but I, I, I think like if anybody wants it hard enough, they'll practice hard enough and they'll get there, you know, like we're not, I'm not asking you to like fly and and defy gravity you know i'm asking you to do something that people can do because people do it you know and so if you don't want to be there like don't be there and if you're gonna be there you have to just like give it a hundred percent for that those three hours that you're at practice or that hour and a half that you're in class or whatever just just give it your hundred percent because it's 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 supposed to be fun it's supposed to be something that you want to do so why put yourself through the misery of doing something that you're just not your heart's not in it you yeah. know and i think i think that um in 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 high school and i think just being a part of a team in general i think you do have to kind of be like nice and compassionate and empathetic to people because you're you're not you're not a solo person anymore. You're kind of part of a team. You're one piece of a huge puzzle, yeah. you know? And uh, I just, I wanted team players. I wanted people that were gonna be uh, praised. And when, when, you, when we were celebrating like your victories um, and everybody was clapping for you, I wanted you to like bask in that glory. But I wanted people to also learn how to do that for other people because mm -hmm. you're not going to be the star all the time yeah, you know when there's 90 people on the squad <laughs> you'll get a good day out of the whole year because everybody else deserves a good day too you know not everybody can have a good week there's not enough weeks in the year for it yeah. you know and you just have to learn how to be gracious when you're celebrated and gracious enough to celebrate other people yeah. and i think that kind of builds a team of people that are accountable for each other and want to want a team that doesn't want to define themselves by the best person but by like everybody you know uh -huh. like to me to me like one of my like coaching things um, and I think this is why people were where like my being hard on people kind of came out from because like when I'm watching something especially like the team dances like when I coach when I watch it I don't watch the front line the people are in the front line because I know they can do it yeah like uh. and and like I watch like the back line I watch the people that are struggling because I want to help them become eventually the front line yeah you know it's a constant rotation you have to start here before you can get here. Yes. And when you're here, like, this is where you're going to be told, do this, 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 do this. Because the assumption is that when you get here, you know it already, yeah. you know? And the person here is guiding the people there through, by an example. Yeah. By being in the front, doing what they need to do every single time. Um. And I think that's why people thought I was hard on them, like I was picking on them, because they're like in that line. I'm all, but I'm just trying to get you to, like, you want to be a star dancer, you know? What we need to we need to fix the things that need to be fixed. That's uh, it. Nothing more than that, you know? It just has to happen. Yeah. You, if you want to go there, we gotta. There's all this stuff too that needs to happen before you kind of. Yeah, it's like that. The, they want the. They want the stardom, but they don't want the feedback. You get and they don't want they don't want to put in the work. Yeah, you know, oh, you have yeah. to. Like we're <laughs> we're not all blessed with natural, and the people that are, I'm really jealous of them. But I wasn't one of them. I yeah. wasn't someone who was naturally a, a, a great dancer. See, you know, so I like to smile. Like that came easily to me. I remember we had to do. Um, <laughs> we had like. We were doing like a Janet Jackson like um, medley when I was in high school as a sophomore, and we were doing part of her "If" video, and it's the part where she's going like this. Oh my God, that part! Okay, but everybody could travel in a straight line, and for some reason I couldn't. 
I can only do the move if I travel in a diagonal. And they were like, Eric, you can't go that way. And I'm like, I, I, I can't do the move any other way. Like, there's no way. It was, it was. That's funny. Yeah, it was. Did you ever tell anyone that? Yeah, people, like, Bopper knows, everybody knows. Like, I, I remember we used to have camp. Um, USA used to come to us yeah. for camp. They would send instructors. And when they do like super sensational dancers, you know, like they pick people. I remember I got picked and the camp instructor was like, this is the person that doesn't necessarily know what they're doing, but they're smiling and they're enjoying every second of it. And you, if you look at, if you look at his face, you would not be able to tell that he doesn't know what he's doing. Uh... And I was all, <laughs> you know, yeah. the performing stuff is, is, was the, the, the performing stuff was like, Second nature. Yeah. The dancing? No, the dancing required a lot oh, wow. of work. So yeah, tell me about that because I just you just made me really think that because I've seen amazing dancers with a boring face, but people who are messy dancers but have the end like their faces are lit up. Yeah. Like how? I feel like that's almost like a co combination of art and science because the movement is very technical. You got to understand the moves and the performance in itself because you can't. It's hard to just figure out hey perform. What is that? Yeah. Exactly. Like, how do you? How do you teach performance? Um, I think, I I think like with with what we do, like the the, the competitive part, you know, like being part on, on a on a competition dance team. I think it's it's almost easier to teach performing because you're kind of given like intent. Like as a coach, I'd be like, you have to smile here. You uh, have to do this here. You have to. It's almost really choreographed. Okay. So a lot of the time, it's kind of. I don't want to say like not sincere, um, but it's, it's, it's choreographed. It's rehearsed. Yeah. You know. Uh, huh. I I like. I don't know. I've 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 come across a lot of people too who are phenomenal dancers, but like boring. Just boring. You know. And. I, I, I never I never get it I, I never understood it but at the same token like I'm someone who um, loves to perform like I love feeling music I love uh, different types you know I love being happy I like being sad I like being aggressive I like all those things and my foot might not always be pointed but my face will always be on and I don't know, <laughs> yeah. I, like I don't know what it is you know and there are a lot of people that are like that I think there are a lot of people that um, can do one or the other and I think combining both is what makes someone like yeah a force yeah. you know you're like that's the person that you watch because they love what they're doing and you can tell in their body and you can tell in their face yeah because it's the complete embodiment of the song as well totally uh, so what did you start transitioning from like coach to becoming to following your own path as a dancer I think um, you kind of I don't know, I think it happens different for everybody. I love coaching, I love it. I miss it so much. I miss being responsible for people. I miss um, like watching growth in, uh, in young adults. I, I miss it a lot. But I think I was lucky because I was coaching and I was, I was performing too. Like I um, got, I was dancing at Disney and they're just surrounded by so much talent and so many people who are kind of like in the same boat yeah who are who want um who want him to be able to have a job where you're like doing what you love to do you know i think working at disney especially like in the industry had a really um back like when i started like it was kind of like a place that you kind of got stuck mm -hmm. um because it was a steady paycheck you know but I always looked at it as like, if I want, I want to, I want to dance. I want to be a performer. I want to be an entertainer. I'm performing and entertaining, and I'm making money. And um, someone else is like looking at me like, oh, you work at Disney. I'm like, you wait tables, and you want to be a dancer. How does that make any sense to me? Yeah, you know, that's true. Yeah, it's like I'm making money doing what I want to do, and you're making money too, and. Yeah. Doing what you want to do every now and then. I got to do it every day. You yeah. know. Huh. Um, but more and more, I think more and more people now like work there and they love it. It's 
a fantastic place to work. Um, but I think I think I just got to a point where I was um, like I just need I just need a, a change. I just want to see other things, and I want to put all my skills that I've learned coaching and performing to use somewhere else. You know, I uh, not that I was not like at the at the at the top of where I needed to to, to be, but I felt like. I wanted to apply everything in a completely different context, mm -hmm. you know. And like I said, I was lucky enough to perform a lot, like a lot of side gigs, side jobs. You know, I was never really into. Um, I don't know the like wanting to become like. I don't want to say like a commercial dancer, but wanting to like do that never really appealed to me. Oh. I like doing shows. I like being like. Like doing music, you didn't like doing music videos. Not and I, I mean, if I, if I, if Justin Timberlake was like being a music show, sure, like say too. yes, <laughs> let's go, you know. Um, but I, I see like because the energy. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like I like an audience. Yeah. I love an audience. That's what I love. I love more than anything, you know. And um, I just I traveling was always huge on my list to do, and. I never had, and so I think um, once a once a job came along that was like, "Hey, if you want to travel and perform," I was like, "Yeah, that's exactly that's exactly what I want to do right now," you know. Yeah, and yeah, and I'm I mean I'm I'm old old for like like dancers, She's old for dancers, yeah. you know, yeah. and so. Our shelf life is very limited, so it was getting to that point where I'm all, I'm not going to be able to do this when I'm 40. Yeah, 40 is like 100 dance years. You know, so I might as well do it now and get it all out, and I've, I've loved it, you know? Like, I've been very, very, very fortunate to be able to sustain a living doing what I love to do, yeah. you know? Um, I was talking about that I was in when I was in San Francisco last week I was with a friend and we were with his friends and she's a flamenco dancer uh -huh. and we were just talking and she was like yeah she goes I just do this on the side like I love it but I just do it on the side because there's not a lot of like work for for a flamenco like dancer I'm just kind of in a company and we have performances she goes mm -hmm. but that's what I love to do and she goes you you you're so lucky and I'm like I know I'm really lucky that I've been able to have jobs that um, keep my like heart full. Yeah. You know, like. So successful and fulfilled. Yeah. You know, and success for everybody is different. Yeah. You know, like success for me is if I if I go to bed happy, that's a successful day. Yeah. You know, and I I can't remember the last time I went to bed not happy with what's happening around me. You know. Yeah. You on your last gig that just came back came back and we sort of worked together to get you in in the I guess to meet their primes that they had. So what did, exactly did you what exactly did you need to go through in terms to get ready and how did you do it? I think um, being a dancer, you know, like no one wants to have I don't know, like a not healthy physique there. And it's the, the, the people that I worked with, like people that are not dancers, are shocked at like how um, image-based everything is. And I'm all, but you, like you guys, you, you everybody buys the tickets. They buy the tickets to go see like these people look the way that they look. Like that's that's how it is, you know? Like we can't, I, I, we can't change, not that we can't change it, but that's that's just, that's that's how it is. Yeah. It's, it's the ugly part of of, of the industry, you know, and um, the, the the hardest thing was like them wanting wanting a dancer and sending in like my like dance tapes, you know, and then being like you're you're amazing, like we want you, but you're not skinny enough, you know, okay. is like it's it's hard, it's it's really difficult to hear. They just say it to you like bluntly. Yeah, they just tell you like you're 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 not skinny enough, and you kind of. You can kind of go both ways. You can kind of be like, okay, well, screw you. Or you can be like, look at yourself and be like, okay, like, they're not, I'm not like 
six pack and like <laughs> muscular and they're telling me that I'm not skinny, yeah. you know? So instead of being like uh, disheartened by it, I'm all, okay, at least it's not my talent. Yeah. At least my talent's there. The physical part of it, I can control, you know? I can take control over it and get myself to a place where I'll be happy with what with like with the way that I look and hopefully they'll be happy with it too you know so they kind of gave me the avenue to kind of um, not do what I wanted to do but get 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 on get on the ship um, I worked with the kids a lot I did like all the dance shows for the kids and get to a place where I was healthy that was the good thing is yeah. that they were like you want to work on a ship and we would love to have you um, come on the ship do this you have a gym here that you can use you know like get yourself healthy and then at the end we'll do it again we'll see you know and I'm like okay like why not let's go they're like come on the ship you, you might even like working on a ship you know yeah. so I went on the ship um, I met with uh, before I went on the ship I met with you and I'm like I just need to be I need to get like eating habits under control like I've always been really active I can't even imagine how You're what I would look like if I wasn't dancing all the time <laughs> you know because I, I I just I like to eat that's I just do you mm -hmm. know and um, I don't know it's hard it's hard to think that it took someone being like you're not skinny enough to kind of be like whoa but it did yeah. and I'm, I'm super thankful for it because it's changed my life. It really has a lot. It has a feedback, huh? Yeah, it is. If I'm gonna give, if I'm gonna be like firm with my kids, when I decide to be part of that performing thing and someone's firm with me, I have to be like, okay, <laughs> yes, got it. Yeah. Noted. I mean, what was the process like in terms of challenges, or was it easy for you to start eating healthier, or was it? Uh, or was it a bit of like, oh man, I, I gotta eat clean today, or uh, any sort of doubts? Um, it? Well, yeah, like, I think you get used to, like, a certain kind of, like, lifestyle, not like a fast food lifestyle, but kind of fast-paced, where you're just kind of not really thinking about what you're eating, you're just thinking about, like, I just gotta eat, I just gotta eat, I just yeah. gotta get this, I gotta get this. Um, I think... I think it's hard for everybody. I know for me, like, dieting and exercise isn't, like, my most favorite thing to do. Um, and more power to the people that love to do it, but I'm not one of them. And I think you have to find um, motivation to do it. And uh, my, my motivation was they told me I wasn't skinny enough, so I have to get skinny because then, like, Okay. And even and even if at the end they're like, okay, well, no, we don't, we still don't want you, you know, I'd have been like, what? Someone else will. Yeah. You know, um, people people wanted me before, you know, and looking more like what everybody else looks like is just gonna better my chances, you know. Yeah. Um. So, the eating, the, I think the eating part was hard because I'm, I mean. I'm Hispanic and I'm Filipino, so oh, it's not okay. like yeah. we don't like we don't really have healthy options. It's yeah. kind of all, like, yeah. it's all there, yeah. you know. Um, and I enjoy food. I love food. I love to eat. I love to eat socially. I it's it's great, you know. But you kind of you can do it, be fulfilled, and do it in the right way. And I don't think I ever learned that um i was like i'm like an emotional eater like uh, i have craves when i'm craving something i'm like that's all i can think about that's what i want uh, <laughs> i want to get a jack-in-the-box egg roll that's what i need right now and i go get it you yeah. know um but being on the ship was kind of easy because i couldn't go get a jack-in-the-box because <laughs> i was in the middle of the caribbean like it's not there um and I think having a good support system is really good. Yeah. You know, like being accountable, like sending pictures all the time. And like, I was never, um, I'm, not, I'm not ashamed of, of saying like, yeah, they told me that I was too fat. I don't care. Yeah. You know, like 
if you're honest with it, I, I feel like because I was honest, people were more like, more encouraging. And they were like, yeah, like, you're looking good, you know, like, good for you, you're sticking to this, you're sticking to your diet, you know? Yeah, it was great. It was good. And, oh, uh, well, on a side note for the progress pictures, was, I was actually, uh, actually coach him on, on uh, habits and I sort of keep, I help keep him accountable in terms of making sure that he's still, he's doing the process and I'm not overbearing how, like, how, how I've experienced some coaches, but I do what I can that makes sure, that meets what he needs. And it's good because I think, like, I think being, um, the amount of like feedback and the amount of like how much you like question stuff is good because I want it I want it to come from me. I don't want to do it because somebody else is making me do it. Yeah. I want to do it for me and be like, hey look, look at my look at my progress. Like yeah. let's let's be happy. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think that's the other thing. I think having people that are too like you can't eat that, you can't do that, you can't do that, oh, you yeah. can't do that. It just makes you want to do it more. You just kind of exactly. want to be like, screw you, I'm going to have a hamburger now. Yeah, because it's, like, it's, it's like that thing is a natural tendency as people, like, don't do this, and don't do it anyways. Yeah. And then, uh, say, I, and especially the way I work with my clients, like, okay, uh, I can, there's cheat days or cheat meals, as long as, like, I say, uh, like, as long as we don't overdo it, then we'll be okay. Like, one day we won't kill you, or, or a cheat meal won't kill you. And that's where some people, like, it, it, it may work for them, mm -hmm. but if they're everyone else, like most people, like, they want the chip. They want the ice cream. Yeah, they totally. Want, they want the adobo. I so, get it. So I, I mean, understand, because I want that all the time. <laughs> you know? I think just saying that it's okay, I think helps a lot of people. Because when people go into the process of getting healthy and active and all that, they think it's, like, very rigid and yeah. very, it's, uh... Like I can't. It's very restricted, like you said. But the minute I, uh, especially for a lot of people that enter my program, it's like, no, it's okay. It's like it just it's like one thing at a time, one habit at a time, and then it, it doesn't have to be hard. It doesn't have to be a pain in the ass. It, 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 it's it's because if it's a pain in the ass, you never go on to want to do it. And you have to allow yourself the time. Like it's not gonna happen in a month. Yeah. You know, um, but you. I think if you like. Everything, everything just takes time. Time, time will heal everything, and time will kind of make everything make sense. Even and something like this, uh, at the beginning, it's it sucks. It's awful. All you want to do is be like, I'm done. I don't care. I'll oh, be fat. Yeah. I don't. I really don't <laughs> care. Um, but you, you kind of just have to, you have to just kind of want it enough for yourself to know that you're gonna stick it out, and you know that you're gonna fall. You're gonna get back up, and you're gonna fall again. And you're gonna get back up. And you're gonna fall even harder. And you just keep getting. You just keep falling. You keep getting back up again. As long as you keep getting up again, like it doesn't matter. Like it's not the the everybody's timeline isn't exactly the same. Your timeline is uniquely yours, and you'll eventually get to where you want where you want to be when you get there. And that has to, you have to be okay with that. You'll get there when you get there. Yeah. See, that, that's that's where some people get frustrated because they have like I'm gonna be. X or I'm gonna have X amount of money by this month. And it's good. I'm, 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 I, I think it's I think it's good to have goals. Yeah. I think it's good to set a place there. But I, you have to, um, like, one of my like favorite things is like saying like it's it's about it's about the journey. Yeah. It's not about getting there is amazing. Yeah. And, 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 and like meeting your goals, fantastic. But like look at like take some time to look back and look at where you've been and look at what you've done and that that to me should be that's that should be a lot of motivation to keep going yeah. and even if you don't get to where you need to go you know you can always give yourself a little bit more time to kind of get there yeah you know like yeah. outdo yourself there's nothing wrong with that you know yeah I, I, that's because that's where i've experienced some people where like if I don't make it at this goal, it, like my life is over. And so it's, um, and it's, it's almost like a yeah. It's um, that's where some people get so caught up in in the results. Yeah, and it's the same with dancing. Like, there are, I, I I'm 27 and I haven't booked anything yet. I'm like, yeah. What if you book something tomorrow? You know? Yeah. 
That, that's true. Like the whole uh, age thing. Some people feel like they're too old. And it is start. like it's. But you're not. Like if you want to. If, you, if you're 40 and you you decide you want to be a dancer, then and all you can think about is dancing, then be a dancer. You know, have but define what you d define what it is and 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 try because there's like there's having those dreams and there's kind of also being realistic at the same time too. You know, it it's an industry of image and it celebrates like um, youth and what's trendy and what's hot and what what it is like yeah. that's that's what it is like if you don't if you don't like it you you, you probably shouldn't do it if yeah. you're not tough enough to do it you probably shouldn't do it um but on the same token like the the only people are dancers and not the only it's not only people that are in music videos and on award shows and on tours there's so many other things that you could do in the realm yeah, of dance that's you know that don't limit yourself to it because it it changes it changes for a lot of people i know phenomenal dancers that are in it and then when they were in it they found something else that they loved even more and what they learned as a dancer they took it there and they've flourished and yeah. they're super successful and they're just as happy yeah you know you just have to just kind of like dive right in and just kind of test the waters and feel everything out and uh, just do, do it for yourself and not, not anybody else. The com comparing yourself to somebody else is the worst thing that you could probably, oh, possibly yeah. do. You know, there's seeing people and like wanting to um, like emulate them and there's looking up to people, but comparing yourself and being like, Oh, that person has this and I don't have this is oh, so detrimental. It's the worst thing that you could possibly do. Es especially in those moments where you, you feel stuck and you feel, um, I don't know, uninspired and um, yeah, unsure of what, what. How do you personally like, get out of that? Kind of well, I, I look at, I remember what it was like when I was starting off as a sophomore <laughs> and I couldn't go in a straight line. And I'm all, Okay, like if I didn't give up then, like right now having a little choreographer's block isn't really gonna stop me. You know, it's not the end of the world. Let me go for a run or let me listen to other kind of music to kind of get out, get like get out of the funk and just get right back in again. You know, yeah. like I think everyone has their own kind of different ways of dealing with stress and dealing with disappointment and being uninspired. Um, you kind of just have to find what your outlet is you know because for every i think about it for every time i felt uninspired i think about all those times where i'm just randomly walking and all of a sudden inspiration hits oh, you know it's yeah. gonna it's gonna be a trade-off like you don't always sit there and then it's a perfect process of creating things <laughs> no, you know like it hits you at random times and there's gonna be those times where you want it to hit you and you're just kind of twiddling your thumbs waiting for it you know uh -huh. it bounces out everything yeah. The work gets done, you know? Yeah. I think that's where some people like can confuse it. It's like, it's time to work. Come to me. Yeah, and it doesn't. <laughs> it, doesn't. it never does. It, it's, for me, when I've, I've discovered that I get out of that funk, from, like, it's almost like how you're going through that walk when I just do something else for a while. Mm -hmm. Like completely let my brain decompress from that Yeah. and just hang out with my family or yeah, just don't force it yeah. just don't force it yeah because I mean if we force the issue the work is going to be terrible like, agreed have you ever done that like if you were like because I know I've oh man I, like when I feel like I forced the issue in finishing uh, I cringe just thinking about it in, in terms of getting a piece of choreography done and I just hate it well yeah because sometimes there's a time crunch you yeah. know and you can't as much as you want to sit around for 12 hours and let wait till inspiration hits and sell and uh, go for a run and do all these things like sometimes there's a deadline and yeah. sometimes you have to kind of make do and you have to just do it you know yeah it's not always going to be perfect but that's a it's a it's, a, it's part of the learning process you so, know sometimes everything's not going to be as amazing as you want it to be there's going to be those things you're going to be all whoa what was i thinking because i've had many of those but Again, I think of all those things, all those times where I'm all, that did not go out, that did not come out well. Yeah. And the other times were things that I had, like, was just unplanned. And I'm all, I'm just going to kind of put this out. And it was amazing. Huh. And you're like, 
well, I got lucky that time, yeah. you know, so, again, so, balance. Yeah, so good and done is better than perfect. Yeah, I, I, yeah. It's not, it's not ever going to be perfect, you know? Yeah. Like, I think people that are creative, that's kind of one of the things is there's always going to be a little <laughs> things that can kind of be a little, a little more, a little more visual, a little more, like, it, it, a little more cohesive. It could flow a little bit better, but... Yeah. Art is art, you know? So, uh, what was the difference like going from coaching to just full on performer? Like, well, because coaching, I was in charge. So, <laughs> you know, like, like the obvious of like. Yeah, if that, that coaching was like I had one of the final says and things. I had full, um, like, creative rights, you know? Like, I could be like, no, that's. Don't do it that way. Do it this way. I feel like this, you know? Um, let's take it this direction instead. And. Performing, like, you can get really lucky and get and be involved with people that appreciate, like, a group effort and, yeah. like, they like everybody's input and yeah. they want it to be a huge collaboration. And there are, uh, there are times where you're going to be performing and somebody like, you do it like this, I don't care if you don't like it, that's what you're paid to do, yeah. you know? You just grin and bear it and you do it because that's, that's who's paying you, that's, that's who's giving you the paycheck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, what are some of the current projects you're working on right now? Well, uh, I I came back and Palmer was like, I have all kinds of choreography stuff. What do you want to do? You know, um, so I'm helping out at Glendale right now. I mean, I leave in like six weeks, so right now it's just kind of I'm doing um, stuff for Glendale. Uh, I when I worked at Disney, I I was friends with a guy that did a lot of drag shows yeah and he um, there were like huge production numbers that he would do and I he asked me to dance in, in a couple of them so I was in a couple of them and then one day the person that was supposed to choreograph for it kind of uh, like didn't and so I kind of stepped in and helped and then I kind of anytime he needed anything choreographed he would call me to do oh, wow. it um, so uh, I got back and then he put me in contact with some with uh, one of the club club promoters that's doing kind of like a like a drag dinner show huh. um, that they need a bunch of numbers choreographed um, for like a full on dinner show at this, this club I don't know um, so I just got that today he just called me today so I'm gonna meet with him on Friday to kind of see like what we can do because it's there's kind of like a time sensitive thing yeah. and they need it done it's like five production numbers for um, I guess like a dinner it's, it's, it's for like a full month that they yeah. have like five days a week um, so I'm doing that and then kind of just I don't know just going to the gym a lot <laughs> just kind of trying to get as in shape as I can because uh, when I go on the ship I'm going to be doing um, I'm gonna be dancing in their shows and also doing like aerial work. Never really done aerial work before, yeah. like silks and stuff. Oh jeez. Um, so we go to like aerial training camp, and um, so I'm excited about that. I get to like have a new skill. Yeah, you know? it's a new thing. Like, uh, resume. So yeah, just kind of six weeks seems like a long time, but it's gonna go by so fast. Like I'm thinking June 29th is already in six weeks and it was six weeks from monday it's already halfway through the week already yeah so it's gonna go by so fast like spending as much time with family and yeah. friends as i can before i get up and leave in eight months because yeah I, I the when i was on this last ship we ported in new orleans every sunday so every sunday i had i had my phone i was in america i could call yeah um can't do that in from europe oh, yeah, so that's right that's right i'm gonna be like just available on internet and Wi-Fi whenever I can find it in Croatia and in Turkey, you know? Wow. Oh, that's, I mean, I think that's practically like travel, dance. It's, that's it's, there's, there's not, there's nothing, there's nothing better. I, um, in, I enjoyed working on the, on the cruise ship, uh, just as much as I loved coaching and just as much as I enjoyed working at Disney and just as much as I enjoyed being on tour, you know? Yeah. It's just, there's always going to be things that aren't good and there's always going to be things that are amazing, yeah. you know? And the things that the things that aren't good, I feel like they weren't good like for me particularly, but some of the things that I probably dislike, 
other people enjoy about like tour life or like ship life or even just being at home. So I kind of just take it with a grain of salt and be like, you know, not e not everything is gonna be a hundred percent perfect all the time. Yeah. You know, as long as the good outweighs the bad, and as long as the bad isn't hurtful or harmful or um, like tearing me down or making me become someone that I don't want to be, yeah. then it's not that big of a deal. Yeah. You know, I can handle a small room if that's the the worst of it is that the room was small. It's pretty good. You know. Yeah. Because some people would just kill. Yeah. yeah of course. You have to, and you have to think about that. I think every ch every chance you can get that you're performing and doing what you love to do, so many people would kill for that. So you just have to be gracious about it every second. You know, and gracious isn't, oh my God, I love my life, I love my life, I love my life, I love my life. It's having a good work ethic and being nice to the people that are around you, being nice to everybody involved in it and um, being just thankful to the universe that you're healthy and able-bodied to to dance and yeah. to perform and to do what you love because a lot of people don't have that luxury yeah you know? well one of my favorite questions what's the Eric like what's one piece of advice the Eric of now would tell the Eric of 10 years ago oh man what one piece of advice yeah um, like it would be like the key <laughs> or something I think if I, if I think of what um, man 20, 20 year old Eric was such a long time ago. Uh, I honestly, I think that um, the best piece of advice that I could give myself is to keep to keep family as the most important thing in your life. Um, and I think I say that because I spent the last two years away from my family. As I as I've grown older. I've felt more and more um, like drawn towards my parents. I see so many things that I was a brat about when I was 15, 16, 17, and the fights that I would pick, pick with them, and I look back and I'm like, God, I was a terrible, terrible son. <laughs> it's, it was so awful to be so mad about those things, you know? Um, and. Not having your parents there, because I have an amazing relationship with my parents, not having them there at like my beck and call, like I, can't, I couldn't just pick up the phone and call my mom or call my dad yeah. when I wanted to, really um, taught me like, as much as I'm getting older, so are they. Like yeah. they're not staying the same age, they're getting older too. And time, time with family is so precious. It's so much more important than that job that you want to book and so much more important than who you're going to work with on your next project or who you get to audition for or um, I think being being sh struggling as a dancer it's really hard to think in those terms because realistically you need to put food on your food on your table. You know, if you have a family, you need to support your family. You need to do all those things. Yeah. But at the same time, too, like, if all that glitz and glamour is taken away, the only thing you have left is your family. Yeah. That's, that's it. True. They they would love you. Even if if you booked the tour with Gaga, they would love you. And if you didn't book the tour with Gaga, they would still love you. <laughs> yeah, and there's true. not many things in your life that will do that. That's you know. True. So. Um, Cause at 20, I'm like, that was the last thing I wanted to do was spend time with my family. I was off. I'm, I'm gonna be an adult. I wanna go out with my friends. I wanna go drive here. I wanna take vacations here. I wanna do all those things. And I'm glad that I did them. But um, now that I'm traveling like the world, there are so many things that I've seen that I'm like, I just wish my mom and dad were here. Cause they would have loved to see this. They would have loved it. And they love it. They love that I'm doing this. You know, that's not something that they were able ever that they ever had the chance to do and since I'm doing it they are just so so proud and I think it helps it makes them feel like they did a great job as parents and they're the most amazing parents ever and I just wish I could kind of be around more but they understand you know we both wish that we were around more like I see my niece and my nephews and they're so much older than it's only been a year but 
those like um, infant to eight, like it happens so fast, and you're you can't you can't get that stuff back. Yeah. You know, once it's once the time is gone, it's gone, and you don't want to. I don't know. Have all this, all these things on your resume. Um, that you've enjoyed and not have anybody to share with because you weren't around for your family. They don't know who you are anymore. Yeah, you know? that's huge. I, mean, uh, I think that's some, something that I noticed, I don't know how long ago, but I noticed that I became such a workaholic that I lost the connection of what I, who I was doing. Yeah, and totally. Because in my head, I'm doing this for a family. I think, but, but I think we're at that age. That's, that's everybody. Everybody in your 20s, that's that's what happens yeah. you you're trying to you're you're and it's with good intention you're trying to establish yourself you know but you have to you have to give credit where credit is due and the credit goes to the people that Support. help yeah. help raise you to cut to this point where you could do this for other people you yeah know? <clears throat> sounds like you're always like you're a lot of the stuff that you did even though it was in I want to say, I'm not going to say that a lot of the stuff you do isn't so much overly self-absorbed, where some people where it's like, if I don't get this, I'm going to kill myself. Like in a dr in dramatic fashion. But for you, it always sounds like you're very, it's, it's, it's fun. It's like, if I get the game, cool. And it's, it sounds like you're very, what's the word I'm looking for here? Like, I guess in terms of, leadership you're very serving yeah like, I'm like, you're very community based that's right? and like, that's 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 my that's that's my parents I get that all the time I'm a, like I'm the epitome of a team player that's what I and and I'm I'm perfectly fine with that I love that I think um, I don't know why not surround yourself with people that are gonna help you yeah you know like that's that's great everybody should have a huge support system around them because those there as much as I pride myself in being really independent there are so many times where um, I needed family and friends to help me through a lot of things and you wanna you wanna support and be there for the people for them yeah when that happens to them because you want them there for you you know and in a way like that camaraderie that I that I love you know I like preach it to everybody like we all have to get along that's it that's it <laughs> it'll solve like 90% of the problems <laughs> if we're, we just all really do get along um, it came from the team it really did you know it was the first time I was part of a team and I, I've loved it and I think I'm always searching for like that kind of environment where you just feel supported because I think it helps it helps in the growth process when you feel like you're not in it alone uh, yeah, it's easier true. it's yeah, easier yeah, yeah. To, to not be afraid when you're by yourself fear can take over your mind so quickly but you know if you have other people to help you like it's still scary but not as scary you know you can hold people's hands and walk through yeah that's true the darkness you know that is so true because they're, they're, I mean, when I started fan base I was doing it like because well, not alone but like, those mo uh, when Mark was being a captain uh, I that was when I was taking the whole team on the whole building family business on my own and I was like crap this is tough it is and then the minute uh, I started getting I, I acknowledged that I can't do this on my own oh my god it was like <laughs> It's so, it's so yeah like and it, there's nothing wrong with it i don't think anybody i think there's a there's a bit of an ego involved that you think people are gonna look at you like you couldn't do it and i'm all look at me how, however you want i don't care like it's easier yeah <laughs> it's easier look at how much more efficient because i'm huge on efficiency how much more efficient we could be if instead of one person doing seven tasks we have three people each doing two and maybe one person doing three all those tasks will be done so much better because you can focus on three things and not on 12 yeah and get burned out yeah it's yeah. the quickest way it's the quickest way to burn out do everything on our own and i think that's 
uh, I remember reading in his book, uh, it's called Virtual Freedom, uh, the author calls it uh, Superman Syndrome. So we, we just gotta, we feel like we can, like, we can do everything on our own until like, some people have to live out. I learned the hard way. <laughs> yeah, I think everybody learns the hard way. You fall flat on your face and you're all, next time I know, you know? <laughs> yeah. And the next time you're quick to be like, I need help. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, that's tough. Like, what, uh, like, why, like, why do, why do you think people take a while to realize they don't have to do it on their own? Um, I think, for me, I, I know, the reason why I want to do things on my own is because I don't want to, if something goes wrong, I want to only blame myself. I don't uh -huh. want to blame other people. I don't want to feel like I put my fate in other people's hands. Yeah. I want to feel in complete control because if it fails, I can only be mad at myself. And you're your harshest critic, so it's easier to be mad at least for me, I don't think it's this way for everybody else. It's easier for me to be mad at myself than it is for other people. Because yeah. other people, I, I'd be like, like, I, I can't believe I blew it because I let somebody else do it. You yeah. know, I think that is 90% of it. You just don't want yeah. to, have, to have other people like, but I don't know. I feel like there, there are certain things that you can tackle on by yourself. Yeah. And there are certain things that you just you 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 maybe you could do by yourself, but it could be probably easier and maybe even more enjoyable with two other people helping you. Yeah. Yeah. And why not? Why not have it why not have a fun experience, you know? Yeah, why be like tooth and nail at something just to be able to say that you did it by yourself, yeah. you know? And no one's really gonna be like yeah, you did it by yourself. Yeah. It's more enjoyable from my experience is like when that struggle or those challenges are shared because we can look back like, dang, remember that one time? Totally. Oh, because that, I think that creates that bond between other people. Um, well, last question. Actually, a couple of questions, but this one's like my favorite. So what's the one thing driving you to do what you do today? Oh, that's, that's for sure, that's my parents. Like, I want to say that it's me. I think a lot of it is me, but um, I don't think any parent wants their kids to all of a sudden be, because I, I, I was going to be the doctor. Yeah. I was destined for med school from four years old. I was going to be the doctor. And then I uh, got involved with dancing and performing, and uh, st I, was still going to, I was still going to school. I was still on that road, and then all of a sudden, I got my first job dancing and it kind of turned into like what I do now yeah. you know and I don't think any parents um, it's not it's like it's not a it's not the most stable lifestyle and it's not the easiest lifestyle and doctor to being a like a, a dancer is yeah. it what I'm I think sure. any parents have in mind for their kids um, but I haven't had to ask my parents for money since like I turned 18 yeah you know since I started um, thinking that I could do it my parents I know my parents know that they didn't raise like a son who's an idiot <laughs> so if I didn't think that I could do it and I didn't think that I could do it in a way that I could make my life maybe not like a doctor but just as happy and just as successful yeah I think they'll feel like they did their job, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think they, they see just how happy I am and how I'm, like, doing things that nobody in my family has done. Yeah. You know? And everybody in my... I, I, I come from a family, a huge family. Every, all my cousins all have um, kids, yeah. you know? They all work, like, nine to fives. Um, Paycheck to paycheck, everybody. Yeah. I'm the only one like within my age range that doesn't have kids. Um, and all my cousins and my family, they're like, don't, don't get married, you know, like, do you because you're like living proof for all your younger nieces and nephews that you, you could fall, you could really 
do what you love and follow your dream and do it and yeah. be successful. Being successful successful isn't like a ton of money and living like with three Mercedes and a huge house and all the swimming pools and everything like that. Being successful is being happy yeah. and being really passionate about your work and finding outlets for all of that, you know? And it's easy for them to say that we know that it's true because Uncle Eric's doing it. Yeah. Like right now. He's not you know, he's not a dancer on the side. On the side. Yeah. You know, he's yeah, making yeah, money yeah. and seeing the world, you know. When it stops, then we'll have another discussion of what happens. <laughs> but I'm I I don't plan on stopping anytime back in the show life after yeah. this. <laughs> Uh, where can people find uh, find you to connect with Twitter, Facebook, or anything? Uh, I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. If you want to see other places that I've been to, you uh, know? yeah, I see those um, a lot. I'm just Facebook and Instagram. I'm not like huge. I have like a Vimeo on the ship. I was able to teach like a ton of dance classes. Oh wow! To everybody, That's um, cool. it's crazy how like people in different parts of the world how styles are so different, and uh, I was the only person from this from the states yeah. so oh. yeah so it was kind of crazy. yeah everybody was from england what um <laughs> so that was interesting that was cool you know it's like like just like a fusion of styles but um i have like all my stuff like on vimeo um and that's it i'm not a, i'm not a huge like self-promoter yeah it's so weird like when people ask and you you need to be in the in this thing yeah. in this huge industry. You know you have to be the person that's constantly like I'm this I'm this I'm this I'm this and more power to people that do it. I'm not good at it, um, but that's the thing that I need to learn. I need to learn to like have like that business card out there. Like this is what it is. What it is. I'm such a um, work with people and love working with people, you know, create a good environment, and then it's kind of like word of mouth. Yeah, it's like, like you create a good network. Here you go, like, I know this guy, like, he's great, he's really patient, if you don't know how to dance, it's okay, because he, he can <laughs> teach you, you know, he can make, learn, teach you how to fake it, so you, so you look like one. <laughs> um, but I mean, like, for the next eight months, I'm going to be yeah, on a ship on in ship. Europe, so, so it's going to be kind of hard. <laughs> All right, so everything he mentioned uh, in terms of Glenda High, uh, some of his videos, uh, finding him on social media, everything is going to be in the social uh, on the social on the on the show notes. All the everything's going to be down below, so you can learn a lot more about it. But other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode of Profiles and Drive. Uh, if you like this video, make sure you hit like, subscribe, share with a friend who you think might enjoy it. But other than that, I will catch you guys on the next episode. Peace. So much for coming. Woo. I love. I finally got. for Tracy Anderson, who is a dance fitness guru, yeah. pretty much. Yeah. Um, she created this method of dance fitness that incorporates a lot of ballet lines, uh, a lot of dance aerobics, some, you know, a lot of dance movements incorporated into a high intensity.